Hi everybody, Brian Balrick here with Roland DGA in Irvine, California. Here to field another question. Uh, this one has to do with our VersaWorks 6 software and the quality settings. So right away I'm running VersaWorks here and got a job loaded in the queue and double clicking it we get the job setting dialog and first one at the top is your media settings. The second one down is the one we're looking at today and that's the quality settings. So right off the top we've got media type and this is where you select the material you've got loaded in your Roland printer. Uh, here's GCVP is a very standard material we run. It's a glossy calendared vinyl permanent adhesive. So this is the profile for that material. This is critical to control everything regarding color and how ink is being laid down on that material. This contains the calculations about each channel of color, the quantity to lay down, uh, the dot size, uh, it, it, it manages all of that. So this is a very critical component to how your printer operates and the quality you get off of the, uh, the uh, printer. Right below that, this is where we get into the calculations of the quality itself. Uh, whether we want to run at high speed, which has fewer passes to create each band of color, or if we run high quality, which has more passes to create each band of color that are very, very tiny, um, inter interwoven and that is, does a great job for hiding all sorts of uh, banding issues. But sometimes you need higher speed, sometimes you'll need higher quality. So you've got a client that's doing printing for a mall that is viewed only at two feet away. Well, you're, and it's photographic, it's people's face with flesh tones. Um, well, that's the kind of client you're gonna run a lot of high quality uh, mode with. Um, then you get a client that's less uh, critical uh, maybe he's doing fleet graphics um, that are on a moving uh, vehicle that uh, people don't get a chance to view up close, or it's just not that critical. Now you could easily run into standard mode, save yourself some time, get the jobs done quicker, especially if there's a lot of them, uh, duplication of the job. Then you take it down all the way to high speed and you're getting things done very quickly, but now you're running the risk of actually seeing more banding because the bands are so big that you can actually visually see where they they intersect each other um the other controls regarding this is uh again just the number of passes uh you'll see here it also changes the resolution of uh, how many dots it's making per inch so at the high speed you've got 600 by 600 standard mode is 900 by 600 and high quality is 900 by 900 and you even can control the total quantity of passes per band. So uh, you'll see here, if I go to the max, it's going to be high quality is 10 minutes, standard mode is uh, four, and high speed is three. That's how that is all interplaying. It's the dot, uh, how many dots per inch, and also how many passes you're using. It just has to do with your client and what you're trying to achieve. These also work in unison with the print direction mode. So you have to be careful. If you're running high speed and you kick it into buy die, um, you're going to get some really fast results, but you're going to definitely see a slight color shift between bands, uh, mainly because at such a large uh, band that you're laying down and one right next to it, and it's traveling or it's printing in both directions, we're not able to change the firing pattern to mate the first pass. So. Uh, that there's going to be differences between the two because dots are playing on top of each other. They're viewed differently if they're laying differently on the next pass, and then you get the idea. So something to be careful about is choosing bidirectional at these higher speed modes. Definitely usable for standard and high quality. You can kick these into bi, bi die and you'd be fine because the bands are so tiny that having a slight color shift is almost imperceptible. So just be aware of that. As we move further down, we've got half toning. So this is really a calculation of the patterning that gets used to, to hide or uh, trick the eye into not seeing a pattern. It, it, it's a randomizer if you look at it that way. So uh, the calculation to do so is either simpler or it's more complex. The more complex one is air diffusion, takes a little longer, but it's for that client that's doing pristine photographic work and you want the very best results, air diffusion would be your choice. The interpolation, this really is just to do with if you brought in an 8x10 graphic and you're stretching it to a poster or bigger, well, as you stretch something, there has to be a calculation of how to fill in the missing uh, areas of color. So this is that calculation. 
Um, nearest neighbors, the most rudimentary. Uh, bilinear is the next level up of calculation. A little more complex, takes a little longer, but get better results. And bicubic is the most complex, uh, but it's also the most accurate. So again, if we got the client that's expecting a, a pristine photographic quality, almost continuous tone off of an inkjet, the way to do that is high quality, lots of bands, 16 pass, air diffusion, bicubic being the best calculation for interpolation, and then unidirectional. So those are the highest quality that you can get. Uh, you could at high quality go into bi dye, save yourself a little bit of time, you'll probably be fine. Standard mode. Definitely, you know, unidirectional is more important in this case. Again, we can kick it up to air diffusion and bicubic. You can try bi dye. Just be aware that check your passes. If you're running 10 pass standard bi dye, you might start seeing things. Maybe you need to push it to 12 pass. So again, think about how all those interplay and what you're trying to achieve. Uh, one other thing to talk about, you'll notice that I've not really spoken about head speed because it's also grayed out by default. Uh, these, this profile for glossy calendar vinyl has it preset at the maximum, which is 1016 for that printer, which is the VG2. But funny enough, you change it to something like backlit material, you'll notice, oh, it's changed and the default is now 592. So that is the speed in which the head carriage moves across and is laying ink down. Um, by slowing it down, it, it a couple things, um, it turns out most of backlit material is slower to dry. So by slowing the head, linear head speed down, it's giving us more time to let those ink droplets set and dry a little bit. Just even, even microseconds of time so that when we lay that next band down right next to it, that we don't get intermingling of the dots and we start losing quality. So this is that control. Just a word of wisdom, really, and if you're ever running maybe someone third-party manufactured material and you're running into things where the, oh my gosh, it's, it's not drying quick enough, um, be aware. You could go to a profile that uses a slower uh, head speed, or you could take control of it yourself. So let's go to glossy calendared vinyl. We'll ignore the default, and I'll slow it down to 500. And there you go. You've just basically cut this printing head speed, the linear head speed, uh, down in half. So, but that's, again, it's only a control that you might need if you start running into issues with dry time. Last but not least, we've got the color management and your presets. So by default, pre-press is a great place to start for accurate color. So this is for a client that has very specific color needs. He's trying to match color, let's say. Pre-press is a great place to start. Then you get a client that says, you know, I'm really more interested, not so much in the accuracy or trying to match a color, but I want color to look fantastic. I really want it to have a, a, a more vibrant a, a, a appearance. So not as accurate, it's more vibrant. So True Rich Color does that really well. And it's one of my favorites nowadays. It's, it's new to the VersaWorks 6 software recently. Um, it's a mapping that boosts the color but what's nice about it is if you have neutral tones, uh, let's say grays, they don't take on a, 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 a color cast. They don't get pushed into a color zone where gray shouldn't be. So fantastic way to do that with the preset of True Rich Color. Um, another one I've used very often is Sign and Display. So it's not, it doesn't push color out to the most vibrant that the True Rich does. It's a little less um, vibrant. Uh, it's a little more color accurate. So again, it, it does a good job of pushing color, but it leaves it. It still has some good accuracy to it. Another one here is Max Impact. Uh, that one is really uh, the client that just says color is not critical at all. I just want the best red, the best green, yellow, black, whatever. Uh, so this is how you would achieve it. It artificially pushes color out to its most uh, vibrant state. Something to watch out for and don't use this all the time because there's plenty of times when you have like a color gradient. Well, if you use this, a gradient starts to look uniform and you lose that uh, slight gradation in color. It becomes one big block of color because you've pushed it so much with the uh, max impact. So just something to be watch, be uh, careful about. I hope this has helped and uh, look forward to seeing you at another video. Appreciate it.